So what do you think about Omega? Why so much emphasis on Rolex lately? Because that's what everybody keeps asking about is Rolex. And also people don't seem to be getting it. So that's the deal, Mike. I mean, you probably understand. Craig, keep up the good work. Okay, whatever that is, whatever that work is. So here's the deal. I'm going to answer any questions I can here. Um, and let me just, let's do a, a, a watch check here. Let me go to, um, let's see, is that camera three? Camera three? There we go. Okay, so uh, as you know, it was um, daylight savings time or whatever they call it kicked in. So I had to actually adjust the time on my Grand Seiko. It was a few seconds fast, and I got it as close as I could to being in sync. You can see there, real time, with the um, Apple Watch. And what I try to do is I try to get it so that when the second hand is straight up at at uh, the 12 o'clock position, so that the minute hand is is pointing right at the marker, so it's exactly in sync. And that's trickier to do than you might think. Um, so I've been able to do that with both my watches. Uh, here's the, um, let me see if I can put the diver's watch in the shot there while we got that shot. There's the diver's watch. And I tried to get it in sync as well as best I could. Um, and of course, the Apple Watch turns off when you least want it to. But anyway, um, I got them both set. And this is a perfect example of why the, is, of why this spring drive is so amazing is here's the deal. It's not that easy to get that hand in sync. And at the angle I'm shooting this, this shot, you really can't tell if I tilt it up like that, you could tell better that it's right in sync. I should get something to shim that up. Every time I bump the table, it'll move, but yeah, there it goes. Let me get a shim in behind that. This is what you get when you get real TV, live TV. There you go. So that's a little bit more straight on. So you'll be able to tell when that second hand gets up to the 12 o'clock position. It's going to be pretty close. I think the minute hand might be just a hair ahead, which I would rather have it a hair ahead than a hair behind. Hard to get it exact. And this is why, um, oh, by the way, can you put in the chat what the audio sounds like? Is it too hot? Is it peaking? Or is it okay? P please just indicate in the chat so I'll, I'll know. And also I'll know if the chat is still working. It looks like it might have frozen up. So anyway, we'll see if anybody responds to that. So it's not that easy to get these things to be totally in sync. And so it's nice that I'm only going to have to do this with these watches when daylight savings time changes because they're so accurate that, you know, twice a year is all I need to reset the time. And so uh, Mike says, perfect. So the audio sounds okay. All right, good, good, good. Um, so to... I, I want to address some of the questions. Let me I'll switch back to me here. Just anybody wants to see the watches, let me know. I'll be happy to switch back to that um, that camera, and I can also show the laptop. That would be position four. See there, I can show the laptop as well anytime I want to. So, um, so here's the deal. What's your I M E E? Oh, instant. Is that it? And I'm not sure, I'm not up on all the hip stuff. So I M E E is that instant messenger or something or what 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 exactly is that? And I'll be able to try to answer you. Um, so here's the here's the thing about my channel, which a lot of these people that are just watch people that are used to watching watch related videos are a little bit confused. My channel is not about watches. I happen to be a fan of high end things of all types, especially accessories, clothing items, you know, whatever, things I use every day. I, I like to see, touch, and feel things that are high quality. You can't really see it here, but I have a mix 
Pre 6 here is is the the audio device that I'm using to mix this audio and the preamps in that are fantastic. It's not really designed for this, for what I'm using it for. It's designed for recording audio. And I've recorded audio. Hi, Craig. The audio is panning from left to right hard. Not sure what that means. Is it because I'm moving my mouth away from the mic? Is it, or is it coming out of the stereo speakers differently? That would be weird. It should be mixed even. Hmm, let me see what the yeah, the indicators. Oh, that is weird. It, they are kind of peaking a little bit differently. Well, this is not an ideal situation because I've got, what I've got is I've got the, the microphone out level on the Mix Pre 6 going into the Roland hardware switchers mic input. This is not an ideal situation. It's, it should be line level out of the Mix Pre and line level into the Roland, but the Mix Pre doesn't have a line level out is the problem. Can you get any discount on the Grand Seiko from the dealers or they only sell? No, you can get a discount. Now, I don't know about Canada. Um, it's a stereo signal that's panning, can be heard on headphones. Hmm. I don't know why that's happening, and I don't know how I can correct it. I'm sorry. Um, there's a little static on the right speaker on my end. Let me move this. Let me wiggle this. Um, hmm. Whoops. Wiggle that plug a little bit. No. Okay, so there's a little static on the right speed. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the audio perfect. Again, this is not an ideal mixer setup here. I should get an actual mixer to hook up, hook up to this. I shouldn't be using the recorder. I have an older... Uh, it's good sounds on my mobile. I have an older Behringer. Uh, but the, And here's the other problem I have is this Roland switcher that's right here has a fan, and if I cover it, there I've covered the fan noise. It, it, it has a fairly significant amount of fan noise. You really can't see it in the camera shot, but it's right here. I lift this up a little bit, maybe you can see it. Uh, no, I can't get it high enough, I'm sorry. I would start knocking stuff over. But anyway, it's a Roland hardware switcher, but it's kind of noisy. It really shouldn't be right next to the static was just increased by whatever you touched. Is it increased permanently, or or was it intermittent? Hmm, let me wiggle the cable again. Okay. Um, I should be monitoring the audio. There's a lot of things I should be doing that I'm not. This is just a very impromptu thing. So, let's see here. Stereo signal, can, can you get discount? Okay, yes. Steve can ship to Canada. I'm sure he can ship to Canada. My guy at Little Treasury Jewelers. So talk to Steve at littletreasury.com. I have the link on a lot of my uh, videos. I have the link to my page, craigship.com slash Grand Seiko. And I have links to Steve at Little Treasury. And I'm sure he will ship. And he'll try to give you the best deal he can. Right now, snowflakes are getting hard to find. There are a few still on eBay at around the 5000 or a little bit lower price in good shape. The 5000 seems to be, or a little, little below, seems to be about as low as they get. Static did increase. Why not use vintage small watches for dress watch? Watches used to be a lot more elegant and probably less expensive. Well, the, the uh, Grand Seiko that I have coming... We'll see. I, I, I think it's going to be gorgeous. Uh, of course, you don't know until you have it in your hand. It's 35 millimeter. It's 18 karat gold. has a very nice case shape. Um, I think it's going to be fantastic, and I bought it for the low threes. So that's not a bad price. But, yeah, there are some other watches out there. Here's the, the reason that I bought that, uh, that particular Grand Seiko is it's the 9F Quartz Movement, which is very accurate. When I say very, 10 seconds a year, 
Again, I'll only have to set it when daylight savings time changes. And for a watch that you're using infrequently, that's a, a good way to go because it's just always going to be working, unless, of course, the battery dies. You don't have to worry about, you know, your wrist winding it like these spring drives, you know, movement, keeping them going. I can keep these two watches going. Let's switch back to the um, Snowflake. Oh, no. Oh, what's wrong here? Oh, Snowflake is three. There we go. I can keep t these two watches running. You can see that one's pretty much pegged. It's like fully wound. I only wore it for like four hours today when I was out walking, and it just went from like two-thirds all the way to full like real quick. I mean, th these things are efficient in their winding. So I can keep two spring drive watches wound, but if I added a third watch to keep wound, that would start getting trickier. So it's nice, it's nice to have the dress watch being the quartz so that I can lay it down and for two weeks not touch it, pick it up, because I, I don't wear a dress watch that often. I can switch back, and I've got no problem. It's always going to be working. And they're very thin, too. The, the uh, Grand Seiko quartz are very thin, which is perfect for a dress watch. I think it's only 10 millimeters thick. I, well, I'll do a full review when I get it. It's supposed to be here on Tuesday. Okay, so Mike says, um, I recently bought a 1986 16800 Submariner, really enjoying it, not a flipper of watches. Tried really hard to like Grand Seiko, but I found they're too thick. Wanted to go under my shirt cuff. Yeah, I hear you on that. And um, that's why, for dress purposes, that's why I bought the, uh, the gold GS that's coming. And I'm, people ask me why I didn't get a uh, quartz initially because I'm so concerned with accuracy. I like that sweep. See that silky smooth sweep of that second hand? And I also like the concept of not having any energy storage device inside the battery. I'm inside the watch. No battery, no capacitor. There's, there's very little to go wrong in that watch. Not that the Grand Seiko quartz is, is a problematic watch either. They're supposed to go 50 years with, with no service. Uh, so you know, just change the battery every three years or so. But let's say you got a, a, a faulty battery and it leaked or something. I mean, it just, it's just a thing with me. But, but again, I've bought one. It's on the way. It's coming on Tuesday. So it's not the end of the world to get a quartz watch, in my opinion, if you get the best in the world, which is what the Grand Seiko is. And those are very thin, uh, by the way. Um, so... So that's going to be interesting to see. Okay, so let's talk case sizes per gender. None of that phony show 30, 34, 36 on non-Asian males. Come on, Craig, 40 million, 40 million million isn't that radical. I See, I don't agree, Bill. I, I, can I, I hope I can call you Bill. Um, so let's see, the fuel gauge meter reading full and the downward position as opposed to facing Oh. <laughs> It doesn't bother me. I just like that it's there because I can, I, when I was rotating my day date with a steel Rolex, I would have from time to time have a problem where my day date would stop. I didn't realize I hadn't worn it enough. It is nice when you're doing a two watch rotation to have that gauge. And the fact that these are so efficient with their winding, they don't need as much wrist time. It's easy to keep them both going. So going back to your size thing, here's the deal. I wore the, the gold day date for 40 years on a regular basis. It's a perfect size watch. It's 36 millimeters. And my wrist is 7.25 inches. It is not small. Um, there's, there's my wrist, okay? And this is a 44 millimeter. Oh, let me switch over to this camera so you can see me. This is a 44 millimeter, 43, depending on who measures it, um, diver. And it, I think it looks great on my wrist. Um, so there you go. But it's not for dress purposes, obviously. It's for when you have your sleeves rolled up or wearing something like I'm wearing now. It's great. I love it. It's super comfortable on wrist, the way it's curved here and all. Everything that touches your wrist is, is curved. But the Day Date was only about 12 millimeters or so thick. Some of them, I think, are 12 and a half. But the way the case is shaped and all that and the size of it and all, it could go under a cuff very nicely. I, I wore it with suits all the time. And it went under the cuff fine. I think 36 millimeter is the largest size you want for dress purposes. And if you want to buy one watch to have an all-around watch, 
uh, to be able to use for dress and, and, and sport and everything, like a 36 millimeter date just would be, would be perfect solution for that. Um, hello from Columbia. Great videos. Hopefully Grand Seiko makes a world timer someday. Ultimate dress watch. There you go. Um, I'll tell you, there are rumors that they are going to come out with some different models and some thinner models. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if they can build the, um, the uh, spring drive much thinner. This, the, uh, let me switch back to the um, watch shot. Okay, so the, the snowflake is 12 and a half millimeters thick, and part of that is because it has the display back on it. Uh, they have a, a spring drive without the display back that I think is 12 millimeters thick. So that's not bad. 12 millimeters is acceptable, and, and, but this one's 41 millimeters across the case. So I've demonstrated in a couple of my other videos, I've had it underneath a, a tight shirt cuff, and it will work. It just would be, to me, I think it would be better if it was 36 millimeter for that purpose, for that use case. And still 12 millimeters or 12 and a half thick will work. Hey, if it was 10 millimeters, be even better. Okay. Okay. I uh, love love the fuel gauge too much here's the thing with the fuel gauge is you don't notice it in everyday use you tune it out you only notice it when you need to notice it when you want to look and, and see how much you have it, it really does not distract you see the reason i don't have the camera as tight on this watch is twofold my tripod didn't want to go any lower <laughs> i'm lazy but also i want to give a more realistic view of what these watches look like if you get an extreme close-up on a watch like you always see on websites and all that that's not really what it looks like in real life. So, uh, greetings from Romania. You're doing an awesome job. Um, now I'm really into GS timepieces. Well, I'll tell you, they are fantastic. Bye, Mike. Uh, thanks for stopping by. They are, they are fantastic watches. Um, I've owned a lot of Rolexes in my day, and, and I'll tell you what, these things just take quality and functionality and comfort on wrist this titanium is just insanely comfort comfortable let me switch back to this other you know this watch is just floating on my wrist it's like i mean it's super it, it feels super solid people are like well they feel cheap no it feels super solid there's no rattling the bracelet doesn't rattle see i'm moving it all around this mic would pick up any rattle okay there's no rattling it's it's very very solid very comfortable on wrist but the fact that it's 30% lighter than the stainless steel, it's just super, super comfortable. I mean, I don't, I, I have to think twice to make sure I know I even have it on. And the other, okay, William, uh, not 36 millimeter versus 41, just the thickness for sliding under the dress cuff. Well, Bill, it's, it's the same thing. It, it affects it. The length and the, the width and all those measurements affect it going under a dress cuff believe me they do um so even if it's thin if it's 41 millimeter yeah it'll probably go under the dress cuff but it would be better if it was 38 or 36 i mean it's all size and you know the the, the 36 millimeter is not a small watch the day date was that way for years the date just for years this fad this is a fad the big watch thing it, trust me, a lot of people are going to be stuck with these big watches and are going to regret it five years from now when this trend reverses. And I think there's already signs that it's reversing. Uh, you know, the, the day date was 36 millimeters for a reason. That was the best watch Rolex made. That was their flagship model. I think it still is. And it was that size for a reason. That's a, that's a really good size. Um, okay, so... Any other questions, folks, about, about uh, watches, you know, whatever you want to ask? And uh, trolls, come on, say hi. I really did this live stream for the trolls. I like my trolls. I love my trolls. So where are the trolls? Um, let's see, 36-millimeter Explorer 1 is a perfect cuff dweller. Absolutely. Absolutely, that's a very good choice. Um... 40 millimeter is not oversized, though, in my opinion. Well, it depends on your shirt cuffs also. Some, some of my shirts, the, the cuffs are tighter than others. You know, but I, 
40 millimeters pretty big it's it just is it's a more like a sport watch size like a you know my gosh a, a submariner's 40 millimeters it's a pretty good size watch um 36 millimeter unisex <laughs> I don't know. If I you see a woman wearing a Date 8, a 36 millimeter Date 8, that's a pretty big watch, pretty manly looking watch. Um, she better be an Amazon. Okay. Trolls are drinking their milk right now. <laughs> static still coming through, man. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Are you sure the static isn't the fan noise? Let me cover the fan up. Okay, we've got it covered right now. The fan is covered. Are you sure it was not the fan noise? Tre testing one, two, one, two, three. And okay, now the fan, I've, I've uncovered it. So I wonder if that static was fa fan noise. That's a shame, though, that we've got static. I wonder what's causing that. Um, hmm. You're spot on with watch sizes and wrong trends. It immediately struck me as you said it it's about selling more stuff when there are enough watches out there love your videos seiko's are touch of class and they make watches at every price point not the fan noise craigs it's a cable that goes to the left side of your audio interface hmm interesting all right well let me i'm gonna a little bit of pressure on that because I've got a a board next to it that the watches are on. Let me switch back to that watch view. And that might be pushing it up. Let me shimmy this. Let me shim this to take some pressure off of that cable and see if that helps. Okay. Uh, now let me move the cable around a little bit just to see what that does. All right, let's see if that does anything. Okay, 34 and up women's, 36 and up men's. You know, there are some real nice Patek uh, Calatravas, I think, that are in the 35 millimeter range. Um, and even 34 millimeter, like the Oyster Perpetual 34 mil, that's a good looking watch. Um, it depends on the watch, it really does. Mark Goldberg said you sometimes infuriate me, infuriate him, so naturally I have to check you out. <laughs> well, he better buy a microphone. Talk about my bad audio with the static. I mean, his audio is terrible. Okay, fixed it. Fixed it. Does that mean the audio's fixed now? Now it's fixed. Interesting, that little bit of pressure on that cable. Huh. Oh, sorry, right side, but it's better now. Okay. Real time TV here. So, um, a lot of these guys that are watch collectors that have a whole bunch of watches, they probably don't like my message that watches are not good investments, that watches are a tool that you should buy and use. So, I can see where some of them would not like the message. Okay, a lot depends upon the contrast and layout on the dial. He he, he. Uh, well, that no, that wasn't an add-on. That was a separate comment. Okay, well, the dial on a dress watch, to my way of thinking, should be very clean, um, not cluttered. I like one without the date on it. Just very, yes, very simple with some nice contrast, maybe a white, or the one I've got coming is like a cream color or a ivory color, I think they call it. A free, audio is freaking perfect now. Oh, that's not, that's a good news. That's, it's a shame it was lousy for the first part of the broadcast, but okay. Um, let me see if I can pull up a photo of the one that I have coming for those who have not seen it. If I can get into eBay here and and pull it up um, while I'm doing that I'll cut back to the watches real-time view of the Grand Seiko snowflake 
Okay, purchase history on eBay. Let's see if I'm even logged in. Okay. Um, okay, good. I'm logged in. Okay, so I can pull this puppy up. I don't mind showing you what I bought. Okay. There we go. Let's cut to camera four, the laptop. There's the one I bought. And again, I won't know until I have it in my hand, but to me, that's a very clean uh, dial layout for a dress watch. And let's face it, when you're wearing a dress watch, you're not going to be looking at your watch that often to even check the time. Really, you're just wearing it as an accessory because it's rude if you're at some kind of an event where you're dressed up and you're, you know, you're checking your watch all the time, whether you're meeting with a client or whatever. Um, so you're probably not going to be checking it that often anyway. But yes, I like a, a cleaner dial. I like that ivory. Um, and so we'll see. It's supposed to be here on Tuesday. We'll see what happens. Now let me cut. Let me get back to you guys. Um, okay, looks like Caltra. Yeah, it's got a case design. Very similar. Okay, let me catch up on the comments here. Um, okay, all things equal, you rather your watch appreciate instead of depreciate. Uh, I never, I would not even think about that. It's not, it, it, if you're thinking about that, you should not buy the watch. If you're worried about the value of your watch, it means to me you can't afford the watch. The watch should be almost a throwaway item that you buy and you know you're going to use and enjoy and you don't count on getting anything out of it. If you get anything out of it, that should be a bonus down the road. It's just like buying a good suit of clothes or a top coat or a nice pair of shoes. Um, if you have to worry about the value of your watch, I would opine that you cannot afford it. Do not buy it. Okay. Hi, Craig. I like to criticize watches you think are ugly. That's very good. And you aren't as biased as others in regards to not selling watches, but remember some of your audience uh, might own those exact watches. Well, sell them. If you can get out of some of those ugly watches, get, sell them and get something attractive and put it on your wrist. That's what I would say, especially a steel Rolex that you paid too much money for. Get out of it while you can. The bubble's going to burst. Get out. Okay, what's your view in two-tone Submariner ceramic black? I like two-tone. And the two-tones aren't selling for as much. Everybody wants steel. So you can get some deals on some two-tone watches these days. I, I, back in the day, I would have never bought a two-tone. Back in the day, we either bought an all-gold, 18-karat gold Rolex, or we bought steel. But the reason we did that is because we got a deal on the steel ones. Now that you're paying a premium for the steel ones, I would probably rethink that, and I would probably consider a steel and gold. Sometimes you can buy a steel and gold for almost the same price. It's insane because people are paying too much for the steel. Hi, Craig. Can you now confess what Seiko Little Treasury did to you to turn you? Hey, i tell you, here's the story on that, and I've told this story before. I had heard about Grand Seikos from uh, Arizona, um, fine time. Uh, I Back when I had the SBDC-007, which I did a video on, the Shogun, Seiko Shogun, it has 700,000 views here on my channel. Check it out. I had seen a video for the diver watch, for this watch right here, on Arizona Fine Time. And I was down in Florida at the time. I, I traveled back and forth between Florida and Maryland. And, and, and there was a dealer like an hour away, but I just never made the trip. And then I was up here in Maryland, and I learned that there was a dealer... I was doing a Google search or something, and I, I, I stumbled across that there was a dealer in Gambrels, Maryland. I said, well, what the hell? I'll go over there, and I'll look. And I always carry some cash with me. And so I went over, and I also asked Steve in advance if I could shoot some video clips at his store for my channel. And he said yes. And he's a nice guy. And so I went there, and I shot some video clips, and I made him an offer on the watch, a cash offer on this watch right here which I thought was a fair offer because I really liked the watch. And he took the money. Then I owned the watch. And a month or two later, I, I picked up a snowflake on a deal, not from him. I had it for a short period of time. 
And then I bought one from him. Again, he gave me a decent deal. I bought a snowflake from him when I was there shooting another video. He's become a client. He's advertising on some of my community websites, including frederick.com, which is my most popular site. Anyway, to make a long story short, we've kind of become friends, but I buy my watches. I bought my watches. I bought my watches from him. Um, I would love it if Grand Seiko paid me money, but they are clueless. They, they, have no bu they either have no advertising budget or they're just clueless. They should pay me. They absolutely should pay me, but they don't. Okay, let's see. I'm a fan of your videos. Uh, looks like I just want to catch up on these comments. As long as the watch itself looks good, size is not important to me. Uh, the quartz is insincere. A la Charles East Lake Mattel. The uh, Grand Seiko quartz is fantastic. It's just fantastic. It, it, it's a great bargain. I mean, my gosh, you can get a heck of a watch for a really good price on eBay and just wear that watch forever and not have to have expensive service costs and, and just wear it and enjoy it. William says, yes. Clyde, nice one. Boner. Okay. <clears throat> Back in the days, watch, it was about being small and light and elegant, and that was achievement of the watchmaker making small stuff. The bubble is going to burst. Yeah, is, is the snowflake crown screw down? Yes, it is. The, the dress watch I have coming is not screw down, which is, I'm fine with that because I'm not going to swim with that watch. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's water resistant. Um, you know, some Calatravas aren't screw down too, uh, as far as I know. Oh, my God. Uh, have you ever considered buying German watches considering... Here's the thing. I, I don't buy a lot of watches, folks. I, I've bought maybe a dozen or two Rolexes in 40 years, and some of them I, I did buy to resell. I got a good buy on them. I, I used to buy them out of the Washington Post. This is an affluent area where I live, and so there's a lot of money. And so I would buy some watches sometimes from people, and, and then I would wear them for a short time and resell them and sometimes make a profit. So I was actually dealing in watches a little bit. And that friend of mine that I sold that uh, red sub to, 35 years ago, Paul Fappell, he's in one of my videos. He was at the show at Little Treasury Jewelers, and I ran into him there. Uh, he still has the watch. Can you imagine? I sold him a red sub like 35 years ago, and he still has it. Okay, if you didn't expect, didn't expect resale value, you're buying the right brand. If you don't expect resale value, you're buying the right brand. Yeah, I don't care about resale value. Resale value doesn't matter. I, I, I want the best watch, guy. You know, is, is that hard to understand? I'm, I'm looking for the best watch to have on my wrist. My wrist is valuable real estate. I don't want to put junk on it. I want to wear a comfortable watch that I like and that every time I look at it, I feel good about it. And the resale value is not in the equation. And by the way, the resale value on Grand Seiko is not that bad. Look at what the snowflakes sell for. Not that bad. No expectation. Okay. Um, what would be the fair price for a stainless steel Submariner pre-owned but in excellent condition? Thanks. Uh, depends on the Submariner, I'm sure. Uh, you know, some of the older ones are going for ridiculous money. I think you can buy a pre-ceramic sub uh, probably for six grand. But that, to me, that's too much. I would take that $6,000. i would buy a Grand Seiko. I swear I would. I absolutely would buy this watch right here. You can buy this watch right here, the titanium one, you can probably get for that kind of money. It's 7100 list, but you can get a discount on it. Don't tell Steve I said that. Um, it's 10 times the watch of a sub. I will not wear another Submariner. I had Submariners. I had GMT Masters. I had GMT2 with a, with a Jubilee bracelet. I had a GMT2 with an Oyster bracelet. Both I bought new. I'm not buying another one. It should tell you something. I can buy any watch I want, gentlemen, trolls included. I can buy any watch I want. And you see what's on my wrist? See that? That's what's on my wrist. There are no limitations. I can buy whatever the hell watch I want. That's what's on my wrist. Why do you not like Tudor? Okay, Tudor, to me, um, it's a non-watch. It's a non-name watch. It's, it's like I would just buy a, a, a Steinhardt. Uh, I would buy a... Um, What's that really good uh, copy, Rolex copy, clone, or whatever the hell you call them, homage? Uh, somebody chime in in the, in the um, 
in the in the in the chat. Uh, the name is escaping me. Um, but there's one that's around a thousand dollars that is really high quality by all accounts. It's a, uh, a, a, a you know Submariner homage or whatever you call them. I'd buy something like that before I'd buy a Tudor. Tudor is uh, uh, there's no reason to buy it. It's it's not really a full blown Rolex. Yes, it's owned by the same company, but it's not a Rolex. I I would either buy a Rolex or I'd buy a Grand Seiko. And you can buy a Grand Seiko for the same price as the Tudor. There's a Grand Seiko right now for twenty nine hundred dollars. It's a thirty nine millimeter. Uh, it's the modern dial. It's on eBay for twenty nine hundred dollars. That's a hell of a deal, and that's a fantastic watch. Ten times the watch, a hundred times the watch of a damn Tudor. Uh, Tudors are popular now just because some idiots have made them popular. These guys don't have a clue about watches. They don't have a clue about what quality is and what it isn't. And they'll just buy anything and they'll sell anything. Craig, I go by Dudley, but <laughs> don't know how to change my profile name. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's the thing. Resale value and G's really depends on where you are. Here in Hong Kong, you take a bath. Yeah, if you sell it. Buy the watch you want and wear the damn thing. You people are, are too ADD. I mean, buy, make sure you like the watch. I, I understand that. Do a lot of research. I do a lot of research before I spend a lot of money on something. But make sure you like it. When I went over and I looked at this watch at the dealer, I put it on my wrist. I really studied the watch. I'd already researched the hell out of it. I'd already worn the SBDC-007, which was a titanium the Shogun, which was similar in a lot of ways. This just takes everything to a higher level. So I was pretty sure, and then when I saw it and really studied it and all that, I was absolutely sure, so I bought it, and that's it. Done deal. I'm going to wear this probably until I freaking die, okay? And guess what? I'm not going to have it serviced the whole time. I'm just going to wear it. You know, there's people are chiming in on my servicing video saying I should service it every five to seven years. Well, you can see, you can spend your money every five to seven years. I'm not going to service my damn watch. Are you freaking nuts? Okay, crusty trunks. Uh, here's the thing. Okay, uh, Snowflake actually has damn good resale. By the way, it's not bad. Snowflake is not bad because a lot of dealers are sold out. Ads, a lot of them are sold out. Um, never buy watches to flip. I, I mean, I did that for a while there. Um, it was fun when I was young and could fool around with it, had time to fool around with it. Uh, Gnault, yeah, that's it. That's the copy that's supposedly really high quality. And everybody says it's high quality. That's what I would buy before I'd buy a Tudor. Absolutely. They're both no-name watches as far as I'm concerned. But if you want something that looks good on your wrist, those will look great on your wrist. By all accounts, they're very high quality. Um, and you save a bunch of money. If I was going to spend $1,000 on a watch, I'd either buy that or I'd buy the SBDC-007, the, the Shogun. I'd probably buy the Shogun, and that's less money. You can probably get one for 600 used. Tudor over, overrated marketing hype. Absolutely they are. What do you think about Tudor North Flag? I don't know the Tudor North Flag, but uh, again, I wouldn't buy any Tudors. Seiko as GS might hurt the Swiss for the second time and have some first with the courts. Now the spring, they, I, they're not going to, cause they can't make that many of them. These watches take a lot of hand work and a lot of highly skilled labor to build. And they can't really scale up. They, they can't mass produce these watches like Rolex can. They, they're, they're not going to be a threat. And plus they're clueless when it comes to marketing. Hence, they're not giving me any money. They should be giving me money. Tell them they should be giving me money, everybody, okay? Maybe they can give me some money, okay? What do you think is the hottest Grand Seiko model right now? Um, some of those limited productions, I've got the video that I did of the ones when I was at Steve's show. Some of those are gorgeous freaking watches, but I'm really smitten with the titanium. I, I mean, it's just so comfortable on wrist. And there's just something about stainless steel against your skin that is not as 
as pleasing. I don't know what it is. I don't. Have to, somebody. Some people say it's the thermal properties. Of course, the weight speaks for itself. But this is just so comfortable. It's like it's like the watch is almost making love to my wrist. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> I freaking love it. Uh, okay. Wait. Let me see. If it makes sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. Um. So the Snowflake is hot, to answer your question. I like this model. I mean, they've got a number of models that are really gorgeous. they got some watches that are ugly, too, that the case designs are, are too angular. And, and you know, they got some that uh, they're not immune to making ugly watches. Okay. SBGA is an easy reference. Clyde, spring drive is all you need. The A refers to spring drive component. Okay. Um, let's see what, uh, let's see. Wearing the, uh, <clears throat> so you're saying Tudor is the Rolex store brand. Tudor is just, I, I, we, we never even considered them back in the day. I mean, and now they're better watches now. All the watches are better now, but uh, no, I wouldn't buy a Tudor, especially the prices they're charging for them right now. And by the way, I think they're getting softer. I think the bubble's getting ready to burst, by the way, people. Sell your steel Rolexes while you freaking can. Mark my words, just like I told my friends to sell their AOL stock in 2001, and they didn't listen to me, they got stuck, okay? I sold all my dot-com stocks six months before the bubble popped, and they were all laughing at me. Oh, you sold it. Yeah, well, they're not laughing at me now. Okay, wearing my SVG Seiko 9F Diver now. Oh, my gosh, that's a beauty. Yeah. You're starting to sound like AC3. Not sure who that is. I don't know all these people, by the way. People are crazy to buy steel watches. They are clunky and heavy. I prefer titanium. Especially this titanium alloy that Grand Seiko uses. This is fantastic freaking stuff. And the and and the SBDC 007 was good stuff too, but it was the coated, with the dia shield, you know, the coating, which mine held up great. But if it does get scratched or something, that's a problem. You can't really fix it. Um, but mine did held. I wore, wore it for two years as a everyday beater, and it held up great. Yes, better watch from the weaker brand. I don't care about the brand. I'm not, I'm not buying for the brand. I'm buying the best thing to put on my wrist. I wore Rolexes for years because they just really were a good value for what you paid and the watch you got. They 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 really were good and 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 yeah, we were brand conscious back then uh, more than I am now. But I, I, I for example, I would not buy a um, Louis Vuitton uh, bag uh, when I can buy like a Halliburton or I can buy uh, a uh, what's that Italian one that I have in there. Um, Amabilia, uh, those those cases are really really well made for my camera gear. Um, so yeah, some sometimes there's there are better options than the leading name, if you will. Have you seen the new Grand Seiko GMT coming out in January? Yeah, yeah, I have heard. I've, I I think I did see it. Is it the one you're talking about with the yellow on it? Anyway, I think I may. Uh, I thought that was out. Maybe it's a different one. There's supposedly some some new models coming out. Most Japanese companies are bad at marketing, but Nintendo, yeah, but GS takes it to a new level. They are freaking clueless. They are freaking clueless. They won't even send me like a sample watch to review or anything. I mean, they won't they won't even comment on any of my videos. They don't even know the videos are are, are even being put out. They're totally cluelless. On a scale of 1 to 10, cluelessness, 10 being max cluelessness, they are a 15. <clears throat> buying Rolex with their model numbers is like ordering from Sears before buying from Omega with their 47-digit model numbers. Okay. Peacock. Yeah, the Peacock, yeah. Okay. Clyde, you should have Craig on your show for a change up more guests more views better shows <laughs> um let's see here what is there really a bubble absolutely there is a bubble and it will burst 
I've seen these things happen before. We, we've had times in the past when, when I couldn't get a discount on a steel Rolex, and then I've had times when I could get a 20% off on a steel. I got as much as 40% off on a gold Rolex. I bought a white gold Date 8 that was in the, in the 80s window, and it, was, it had been in the window for two years. He couldn't sell that white gold Date 8 to save his life. And not only did I get 40% off, but I got 40% off the price at the time it was two, it was a two-year-old price. So I, I don't remember the numbers now. I, I want to say it was around 3,000 list, and then I got 40% off that. And this was like in around 1982. Um, so, I mean, I just got <laughs> all of a freaking buy on that. I just couldn't pass it up. Brand new white gold day date. It was kind of fun. I wore it for... A couple months, and then I sold it to my boss. I was working. It, it was actually 1980. Now that I think about it, because I was working at Capital Porsche Audi, selling new Porsches. Or maybe it was 79. Jeez, man, I'm getting old. Anyway, I was selling new Porsches, and the guy that owned the place, he he ended up going out of business, and he had like, I don't know what. He had some extra cash or something that he needed to get rid of as some kind of phony deal. And so he bought the white gold date eight from me and I made a little, I made a profit on it, not a ton, but it was fun. I wore it for a while and then I sold it to him. That was a hell of a watch, but I got a hell of a deal on it. Brand spanking new that, that, that AD couldn't sell that thing to save his life. Rolexes didn't always sell that well, folks. They sat in the window for quite a while sometimes. You're buying, uh, you're buying the brand, else you had to scrutinize the quality of each single GS watch. Yes, I did scrutinize the quality before I bought them. I, I, now, I didn't scrutinize the, the dress watch that's coming from Japan. That was a leap of faith. I haven't seen the watch. I bought it sight unseen. But if I don't like it, trust me, I will sell it. I will not keep it. I don't keep stuff I don't like. And, and and I don't buy watches that I don't think I'm going to like. I, these watches, the Snowflake and this watch, I, I examined completely. Absolutely, I examined them. They're fantastic watches. That said, I don't know if I'm going to keep the Snowflake forever. I don't, I don't really wear it that much. I wear it a couple, three hours a day just to keep it running. But I really wear this Divers m most of the time. And if I like the... If I like the... Dress watch that's coming on Tuesday. It's supposed to come on Tuesday. It may it may come Wednesday. But anyway, if I like it um, a lot, I might get rid of the snowflake because I might not really need the snowflake at that point. Because if I use that one for dress and this one for all the other time, uh, the snowflake might become unneeded. And unneeded watches, in my world, they go. They do not stick around. Do you have a machine which keeps your automatic watch? Hell no. I wouldn't. Use, I would not use winders. I don't believe in that. It's extra wear and tear on the watch. I just wear them. I have a two watch rotation. I've had a two watch rotation for forty years. Up until five months ago, it was usually a steel Rolex and a gold Rolex. Now, um, uh, actually. Prior to that, I had the um, SBDC 007, the Seiko, MMI Date 8 was the rotation. And then before that, I had the uh, Omega. I actually had an Omega for a while, a Speedmaster 120, and that was a quartz, and that way I didn't have to worry about it stopping. Um, but before that, let's go back 10 years from now, 10 years back, it was always a steel Rolex and a, and a Date 8. I've always had a day date uh, for the last 40 years. First couple of them that were used it was stretching the bracelet and stuff. Then I worked my way up. Okay, do you think the next financial crisis will come first or the Rolex steel bubble? <laughs> Could come at the same time. Do you think there's a bubble on vintage watches? I'm not so sure which ones, but yeah, I think this whole thing is going to be a real questionable situation for a lot of people. All this money they've been spending on these watches is... I think it's going to come back to haunt a lot of people. White, gold, and platinum are pointless, precious metal. Look like steel. I, I agree. I'd rather buy a 18 karat gold, yellow gold day date, but I got a hell of a deal on that white gold one. <laughs> All the other ones I've had have been yellow gold. 
Uh, no Rolex movement out there can compete with the accuracy of spring drive technology as well. The craftsmanship that goes in the overall finished Rolex is, of course, the, the, the Grand Seiko is, is a far superior watch. Anybody that says otherwise are just a fan, a Rolex fanboy, or they've never seen a, a Grand Seiko and handled it, or they have no taste, or they're half blind, or all of the above. A good, good, a good journalist friend of mine here in Sweden was invited to GS last year. We'll send you his report. Amazing reading. Might make you believe GS are not as clueless as you think. You mean as far as marketing? They're clueless as far as marketing. Trust me. In the U.S. at least. I don't know about the rest of the world. But they're, they're clueless. Um, greetings from Strasbourg, France. What is your opinion about German tool watches? I'm not familiar with them. I'm sure they make some really good watches, um, but I'm just not familiar with them. The only reason you wear the diver is because it's more accurate. Ha-ha. I like accuracy. Um, I do have some things I do from time to time that, that time is, is it's important to be accurate. Like I call into radio shows at a certain exact time they want me to call things like that. Um, so, yeah, sometimes accuracy is important. And plus, I don't like to have to reset the watch very often. That's a pain in the neck to me. Um, so, yeah, I, I love the fact that these are just uber accurate, especially the diver. Oh, my God, this thing was within a second after five months. I just reset it because of the time, time change, this damn daylight savings crap. Um, but it was like within a second after like almost six months. Your, your opinion on Seiko, Seiko Astron. Astron, I'm not sure exactly what that is. Is that some kind of a uh, solar watch or something? I wouldn't go for a solar watch or a kinetic or any of that crap. That's too much stuff to go wrong in there. Winders are not practical. They may seem at first. Yeah, I wouldn't go with a winder. Um, I think you got too many watches if you got to have winders. Yellow gold has stood the test of time. I want a yellow gold, 3255, 40 millimeter. Not sure what that is, but yeah, it sounds like it's a good move. Could you recommend me a dress watch under 1,000? Dress watch. Hmm. Buy the new Apple watch. They made it thinner. <laughs> and mine was already thin enough to really use for that. So I think mine's 12 millimeters. I think they made them even thinner. They'd buy an Apple watch for that kind of money. People are going to laugh. I, I wore an Apple Watch for two years. Let's switch, let's switch to the watch view real quick here. Bam. Update on watch. Let's wake up the Apple Watch. There we go. Update on the time. Okay, let's see here. I like GS the watch. I think GS is the, is the watch people will keep through a financial crisis. Price of steel Rolex will be all over eBay's. <laughs> That's for sure. We'll see because they bought too many of them. If you bought like six of them, I don't think people are buying six Grand Seikos, you know, especially to speculate on them. I mean, <laughs> that would really be stupid. Um, so, yeah, that, 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 there's going to be a ton of these things because people are buying too many of them and they're paying too much money for them. And then they're going to all panic and all want to get out at the same time. And it's going to be a disaster. Those who waited and were patient are probably going to be able to get some good buys, but I wouldn't want them anyway. Even if I could buy it for five grand, uh, I'd still buy the Grand Seiko. Okay, concerning the watch, but we're considering how many steel investment watches are in stock with collectors, it, it will crash badly. Yeah, it will. What diver are you wearing? This is the Grand Seiko. This is the, um, oh, geez, I don't remember the model. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I don't remember the model. But anyway, it's the titanium one. It's the 200 millimeter titanium diver spring drive. Um, it's $7,100 list price. Let me show you a closer shot. Let me get over here with the other camera. <clears throat> oh, I wasn't even showing it to you. I was on the other camera anyway. Okay, so there it is. See if I can get the tilt right. That's the... Um, diver it is a uh, titanium it's a 200 millimeter 200 200 meter um mortar water rating or whatever people oh that's not enough yeah right as if i'm going to go any deeper than that i won't even go 10 feet deep 
Uh, it's a gorgeous watch. Look at the shape on that case. It just fits so nicely. Let me switch back to this camera. Whoops, I'm wiggling the whole table. And you'll see how, how well it fits on the wrist. And by the way, I didn't really like the um, clasp that much when I first examined it. But now that I've gotten used to it, I really love how easily adjusted this is. Watch, watch what I do here. Let's say I want to let this out a little bit. I just pull this up. Bam, I just let it out. Okay, quite a bit. Now I can just push it in one click at a time. One click, two click, see? And then I can get it to exactly where I want it. Let's say it's one click out right now from full tightness, right? And, and, and also, now I'll just go ahead and put it all the way in because that's perfect for me right now. Also, it has four micro adjustments. So you can really get it very close to where you want it. And then when you need to, like it's a hot day, humid day or whatever, your wrist is expanded a little bit. You can just like I showed you, you can pop it out just a little bit very easily. And it's so easy to work with. Much better than the Rolex solution, the glide lock. Um, and this is not, the glide lock is even longer. The clasp is even longer and bulkier. Um, this looks bulkier just because it's, it's shorter and because and of the way it kind of sticks out. But it, trust me, it's not. It's, it's, it's actually more trim, and it really works well. All right, let me ca catch up on the... Um... See, I'm all about functionality for these watches and actually using them, not putting them in some drawer somewhere. I think you... Okay. Trying to catch up on the comments. Um, why do you need a one second, five second accuracy in your life? Because I don't want to mess with having to reset my watch all the time. I don't need a lot of things. I don't need this watch, period. I just want it to be accurate. And if I can get that, I'm going to get it. And plus, it's less wear and tear. The way this, this movement is designed without the escapement, there's less wear and tear, so this will be able to go a lot longer without being serviced. You can probably go 20 years with a Rolex without having it serviced. No problem. Um, but 30 years, you might be pushing your luck. This will probably go 30 or 40 years without having to be serviced at all, but just because of the way the whole system is, is, is built. Of course, they would rather you service it, and they, they'd love to take your money, but you don't need to. Which is the smallest men's size Grand Seiko spring drive? I... I it might be 39 millimeter. I, not that small. Um, that's a good question. I think it's 39 millimeter. Um, why do you need? Why do you need any accuracy? Why is there a superlative chronometer? Um, I just answered that. I love accuracy. How do you feel about high-end quartz watches? The GS, the Grand Seiko, quartz, quartz is fantastic. The 9F. I've got that dress watch coming. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, let, me, let me show you again that watch that I've got coming. That's a puppy I've got coming, and that's got the 9F quartz in it. Uh, hopefully it'll be here on Tuesday. It's going to need a it's going to need a leather strap band. It's got some wear on it. So so Steve's going to hook me up with that. Um So that'll be another trip over to Little Treasury Jewelers. Um let's see here. Does it keep keep the one click position if you take it off and on again or do you have to do it again? It sometimes it Actually, what usually happens when I take it on and off, sometimes it'll go out just a little bit. It'll go out one position, one click. So when I put it on, it'll be a little loose. But it's just literally a split second to just push it right back in. It's, I've just gotten so it's like second nature. It's not a problem. I've, I've gotten so used to it. I love it. I would not change it. When I first got this watch, I toyed with the idea of getting a clasp from a different Grand Seiko and putting it on there and actually changing it out. I'm glad I didn't. I've gotten used to it, and I really like the functionality of it. And it, it's comfortable. It, it, it's, this is stainless steel, the clasp. All, all the rest is titanium. 
this comes off like the dive dive master or whatever you know th th this clasp is is not really a grand even though it says grand seiko on it it's really comes from the high end uh marine master seiko okay the class is stamp metal yeah but it's fantastic the stamp the fact that it's stamp metal doesn't matter it's it's fantastic you got to use it and wear it for a while and then you know um i have no issues with it and it's i'm sure it's going to hold up you know for the life of the watch it's really really fantastic Do you plan on getting one of the u.s limited editions no, if this diver's, I mean, if the dress watch I have coming is as nice as I think it's going to be, I think I will be set. I love my SBGX 115 9F, which I got out on trade for 354 parts Zenith and some pocket change. Although I love the Zenith as well. No regret was that the GS just feels grand. Yeah, it is. It's a fantastic watch. You think Omega's uh, Swatch Group can compete with Rolex or cars? I think Omegas are good watches. I wouldn't buy one. Not when I can buy a Grand Seiko. Um, I had Omegas. I had an Omega. Uh, there's a video on my channel showing it, and there's photos on my... By the way, if you want to see the photos of my watches and so on, just go to my Flickr and search watch. There are links from my website to my Flickr. And, and and there's a bunch of videos on my channel of watches that I've had in the past. Not all of them, because most of them I had before YouTube even existed. But I have some vintage photos of, of me wearing different watches from years ago. Uh, I'll pull one up here in a minute and show you. Um, uh, the OP 36 millimeters, amazing. New 39 millimeters, Oyster Perpetual. I would get, I'd probably still get the 36 millimeter. The 39 would be good if it's going to be your only watch and you don't dress in a suit very often. You don't wor worry about a shirt cuff. Then, yeah, the 39 would probably be the way to go. But if you want an all-around watch to wear also for dress purposes, I think the 36 is better. I get a dress watch, or is the Snowflake a bit thick? The Snowflake in my last video and some of my other videos you'll see, it goes under my shirt cuffs okay, but some of my tighter shirt cuffs... It's a little bit on the snug side. Uh, again, a 41-millimeter watch, I think you're pressing your luck on dress use, not just the thickness. It's the whole size of the whole damn thing. I, I think you are you can get away with it, but I think the smaller watch, thinner watch, is going to be better. I will let you know on Tuesday when I get it. I will be doing a review. Um... But if you only had a snowflake to answer your question, you could probably get by with it, even if you wore a suit a lot. You could probably get by with it, but it would not be my first choice for that use case. The spring drives does not have circuitry that will wear out. No, the circuitry is, is very minimal, and it's very robust, and by all accounts, it will last a very long time. They've been around 15 years now, and they just don't give any trouble. And, and there's no evidence that they'll give any trouble. It's very robust, much more robust than a typical mechanical, for example, Rolex movement. And Rolex movements are very robust, so that tells you something. Do you think, let me rephrase, do you think they will eat away at Rolex market share? I don't know about that. Rolex is a juggernaut when it comes to marketing. Rolex, they're, they're the best when it comes to marketing. It's going to be hard for anybody to eat away at their market share. You want to increase your audience, cater to the low-budget watch buyers from time to time. I'm not a watch channel. I'm, I'm just doing this to try to help some people out and answer their questions. I'm just really responding to people here. I'm really not a watch channel. Um... Okay, Watchbox has a 229 and 031 diver spring drive titanium for 4950. Is the 031 a good deal? Here's the thing. I don't like the older dial with the Seiko at the top and Grand Seiko at the bottom. I like the newer 2017 and newer dial with Grand Seiko at the top. So I would probably not buy that one. I would probably keep looking and buy the one with uh, Grand Seiko at the top. That'd be a 231, I guess. Um, 
as you so- said, putting ten gay in a steel sport Rolex is stupid. Would, would you do it in a steel Grand Seiko, for example, high beat blue ceramic? I don't think you have to spend that much. Um, what's the list price on that watch? Tell me what the list price is, and I'll tell you what to offer them. Uh, I would get a deal on it. <clears throat> no, I would not spend $10,000 for any steel watch. I'll put it that way. I don't care if it's a Patek Philippe. I would not do it. I would buy gold before I would do that. Is the incoming, and, and, and a gold watch is freaking gorgeous. I'm sorry, all these steel watch lovers. I mean, they're freaking nuts when you can have an 18-karat gold watch on your wrist. I mean, it's just, it's just so nice. Trust me, I wore it for 40 freaking years. Um, I look forward to your upcoming watch review. Keep it up. Uh, love your videos, Craig. Thank you. Uh, da, da, da. What do you think of the Rolls Gold Rainbow da- Daytona? I'm not a fan of the Daytona. If I was a race car driver and I needed that functionality, yeah, but I would buy a GMT too. If I was going to buy a, a sport Rolex in today's day and age, I'd buy the GMT2 because it's thinner than the sub. And I think it's a, it's a more practical watch. And I, oh, I, I had a couple of subs, but then I started buying GMT2s. I, and I had a couple of GMT2s that I wore for years. I had one that had the Jubilee bracelet and one that with, with all black and one that was, um, I guess you call it the Pepsi with the, with the Oyster let me see if I can pull up, um, frankly, the amount of money discussed with watches stuns me. Uh, to co- be, co- the Seiko high beat in blue ceramic is 15K. Oh, that's that titanium and ceramic you're talking about. That's what you're talking about. That's titanium and ceramic. Yeah, no, I wouldn't buy that watch. First of all, I think it's a little bit overdone. I'm not going to call it ugly, but it's... No, I, it wouldn't be my choice. I'm amazed tr- Trump or in the world rose at GT. Okay, so let's go here. Let me pull up a watch. Um, see if I can get... I'm going to pull up... Uh, sh- EMT, whoops. EMT. Just to show you... Um, Your photos, is that me? Oh, no, that's the Steinhardt. <laughs> I was going to say, that looked like it. That's a Steinhardt. Um, your photos, view all 42. Let's see if I can find it here. Yeah, here's one showing me, wearing it. I was a real jerk. Let's see here. Let me, how can I zoom? Um, here we go. Got it. Okay. So there's the, um, let me switch to that one. Okay. So there's the um, GMT2 that you kind of, kind of hard to tell in the picture. It's a Jubilee bracelet. And that picture was probably taken in, I want to say 1982-ish. So that's that's um, an example of uh, a watch that I would have been wearing back in the day. So I look like a real jerk, but that's it. That's what I look like. Okay, so all right, let's see here. Um. I have to go, Craig. Okay, somebody. I'm amazed. Trump. Okay, here, let's catch up here. Does little Treasury negotiate on the price of Grand Seiko's they sell? Yes, he will. If he knows you're serious, you're not jerking him around. Talk to Steve direct. Tell him you talk to me, and absolutely strike the best deal you can. But I tell you what, the sooner you do it, the better, because these things are getting in demand and they're getting sold out. I think the snowflake is already sold out at his place. And I don't know what the waiting list is. When will you make an update 
on the accuracy of your GS diver and snowfall. I just reset them because of the uh, daylight savings time. But the I did an update um, a, a few weeks back or whenever. The last update I did, the diver was within a second after five months. It was insane. The snowflake was gaining about a little less than two seconds a month on average. Two seconds a month on the snowflake. Uh, that's what they're running. The diver is just insanely accurate. Insane. Um, of course, two seconds a month for the snowflake isn't anything to sneeze at. Um, uh, I don't think it's necessary necessarily the design. He is, <coughs> excuse me, the price brand. Um, I'm going to get some H2O to drink real quick. Keep, keep the questions coming. I'll be right back. Ah, uh, oh, okay. All right, let's see. Where'd he go? I went to get a drink. Okay. All right, have a nice evening, somebody says. Okay, let's see what I missed here. Thanks for the entertainment, Craig. But as you said, <clears throat> your... Your body is valuable, so please, next time, could you wear a better sweat polar? This one is ugly. <laughs> this one's made in the USA, this Patagonia, by the way. All of my stuff, my Patagonia North Face stuff, is all older when back in the day when they used to make them in the USA, and they were really well-made stuff. I won't buy any of the crap they have now. Um, okay. Let's see. Thanks for entertaining. Okay. Um, oh, wait. Uh, have a nice evening. Thanks, because I live in Maryland as well. Cool. Well, excellent. I'll see you over at uh, Little Treasury Jewelers. I'm going to do a video. He's going to have the new display, Grand Seiko display, opening in a week or two. I'm going to do a video about it when I go there and get a new strap for my dress watch. Hopefully. Snowflake rules, high level quartz actually in a mechanical. Oh, it's just it's it's fantastic. The snowflake is is amazing. Why is the di diver movement more accurate? There's variations in the in these spring drives. They're not all the same. I got lucky. I got lucky. Um Okay, so I made, I had the, the money clip made. I had some extra gold laying around, like an old class ring that I never wore. Big freaking gold class ring and some other gold stuff, jewelry, old stuff laying around that I wasn't using. So I took it to a jeweler and told him to melt it down and make me that, that money clip. And he did it. I think he charged me $400 to make the clip, just labor. And I supplied the gold. But I really like it. Uh, it's heavy. It's, it really works well. Um, I have a, uh, a, uh, sterling silver one that I bought new and at Tiffany and company, one of my trips to New York, actually the same time I took one, a, a Rolex there to be serviced to the Rolex building. I stopped at Tiffany company and about the cheapest thing I could buy there was the money clip. I think it was 30 bucks us back in the early eighties, stainless steel. Uh, getting water. Okay. It's amazing. You still use paper money in the U S I can't remember when I last used non-mobile or credit card here in Denmark. I'll tell you what, you go in there with hundred dollar bills and that's, you can get a deal. That's all I'm saying. 
You walk into a jeweler with $100 bills, you can get a deal. That's how I bought that white gold day date back in the day. $100 bills. They talk. Um, <clears throat> okay. Does Grand take a whole value at all? Not bad. It's not bad. I mean, especially the um, snowflakes. Not. Uh, it's going to be. Uh, I'll probably if I sell my snowflake, it'll probably go for high fours, maybe even five thousand, uh, but probably more like forty eight hundred, something like that, ish. I'm not going to tell you how much I paid for it, but I didn't. I did not pay fifty eight hundred list. I did not pay list. Um. But I'm not going to tell you how much I did pay. But I, it was $100 bills, I will tell you that. And that works. Uh, enjoy your videos. Finally got, you know, pull out a damn credit card. They got to pay a percentage on that and all that crap. Don't give them a check. $100 freaking bills and you're going to get a deal. Okay? That's all I'm telling you. Um, finally got a first Rolex last week. A 2007 Explorer for $4,700 without papers. Um, great shape. Praise for the good. Hey, that's that's a good watch. I like that. 2007. That's probably got the solid end links on it. 4700. Hey, wear it in good health. Enjoy it. Don't worry about how much it's worth now. Just enjoy the watch. Wear it all the freaking time. The easiest way to lose a watch is to take it off your wrist. Nice patriotic glass. <laughs> Just ordered my new GS SBGE245, limited edition, Rising Sun GMT. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Do box and papers matter in the GS resale value? Everybody's worried about resale value. Got a lot of freaking watch dealers here. <clears throat> I don't know. To me, I'd want box and papers. I think if I was buying a used watch, it'd be nice. But I don't know how much it affects the value. I'm sure it does. I mean, people want to know it's for real and you're for real and all that kind of good stuff. You know, <clears throat> here's the other thing about selling watches. It's not that easy. You know, how do you get the watch to them? How do they pay? You know, it's it's a little bit involved and there's risks involved in all of that. Um, uh, if you think of reselling a watch or money, you aren't getting the message. <laughs> That's correct. I don't. I'm just curious. Okay. Um, can't stop looking at my Rolex. What's that, a super chat? <laughs> I've never gotten one of those before. <laughs> A dollar ninety nine. Wow. Rolex eighteen two three eight double quick set. Fantastic. Eighteen two three eight is is fantastic. That's the watch that I have. Bought it new in early two thousand. I've got a video on my channel. A bunch of videos on my channel of that of that watch. Okay. Uh, I got to read the rest. of it. I wouldn't sell my watches if I bought a second hand box and papers. Wouldn't that matter? Very important to buyers and sellers these days. I. I can't advise people on buying and selling watches. I don't believe in doing it. Even though I will sell a watch if I'm not using it, I'm, I'm, yeah, but I'm not, it's not what I think about when I'm buying a watch. I, I think about, am I going to enjoy that watch? Will it meet my needs? What happened to the second snowflake that you had? Then you end up selling it, give it to your dad. Um, <clears throat> that's a long story. Um, but the short answer is, I sold it. I've seen the snowflake, and it wasn't as accurate as the one I have now. And I didn't have box and papers on it. <laughs> I've seen the snowflake go for 4200 to 44 used on Reddit Watch Exchange. That's a hell of a deal. If it's in good shape. It's a hell of a deal. It's all fiat money nowadays, but if you... They have it digitally. It would be easy. Yeah. Except for my Bitcoin. It's not fiat. Bitcoin's the future. Selling watches is PIA. Okay. We have a huge distrust in government, sure. But even with all this tracking, we haven't caught the people behind... I'm not sure what that is. 
I've seen watches sell in minutes on the watch exchange forum. <clears throat> but wearing a Rolex 11, 600, of the blue Arabic dial, 36 millimeter, love it. Okay. All right, well, um, this question seemed to be ro um, winding down. Is there anything else? Let's, let's cut to the live shot of the watches. Whoops, that's the computer. That's the watches. Let me woke, wake up. The, there we go. <clears throat> so there's the live shot. And look at that super smooth second hand. What do you think of Ethereum? I would not waste my time with it. Bitcoin all the way. I'm a long-term Bitcoin holder. Bitcoin and only Bitcoin. I don't deal in altcoins. I have no interest in altcoins. Uh, I sold some of my Bitcoin last fall when it just went up like crazy, as you all know. Um, I sold some, but I kept the majority of it, and I'm planning on keeping the majority of it till at least 2024. And I'm a long-time holder. I've been holding for years. I, I like the concept of it. I like the concept of a money that nobody can control. No government can control. No, no individual can control. That it's strictly market-driven. Can't be, you know, well, can be manipulated by whales right now. But hopefully if, it's a, if, it, if it is successful, it will not be able to be manipulated once enough people have it. It'll be strictly market-driven. Um, <clears throat> I'm not worried about box of papers. The only reason I know is that a watch can retain value in case I decide to upgrade. Now, it shouldn't, you shouldn't even have to worry about that. Wor hey, worry about making money. Do whatever you do to make money and don't focus that much on this stuff. This will distract you from the important things, which is make a ton of freaking money. Okay. We're, we're, it, it, with the internet and everything we have right now, it's the, it's the time when you should be coining money. You should be raking in freaking money. Is the trick some investors use to extract EU taxpayer loophole? Shorty, I don't, I'm not. What, what can you say about the available Shogun 029, same as the 007? I think it's, uh, yeah, those newer models are kind of the same watch, just kind of rebranded and stuff. I, the 007 is fine, but I, I think any of them are fine. I'd get the one that I can get the best deal on. If you can get an 007 for like 600 bucks, I'd go for it or less. Keep doing live feeds, please. <laughs> I, I, oh, my gosh, I've got a freaking uh, job I should be doing. Um, the 9F has a beautiful no wiggle vast seconds tick that is also a joy to look at yeah it's going to be cool i i'm looking forward to to uh to having that watch um oh uh, let me think what else <clears throat> what else was i going to say let's cut back to the snowflake what do you think Oh, we're, we're, we were on the snowflake all that time. Okay. Cut back to me. All right. Do you miss the red? Uh, well, yeah, I can always visit it. I can go visit Paul out in Annapolis. He asked me to come out and go on his boat. I haven't seen it. I haven't been out there. He moved out there like 25 years ago, and I have never been out to visit him. And we reconnected at the, at the little treasury thing. That was really cool to reconnect with him. He's got all gray hair now, and I've got gray hair. We both had black hair back in the day. It was kind of cool to see him and see the, to see the red sub and see that he's going to keep it forever. He, the, by the way, the bracelet he had on it is not original. He does have the original. He took it off to preserve it, and he put a, uh, you know, a non-original bracelet on it. He's really taking good care of that watch. Great just Hope to see more shows. Good day. Um, can't stop looking. Your thought on the Rolex Date Just 2. Uh, two-tone jubilee absolutely i would get that i mentioned it in my last video um and they've got one on the watch box a really nice one uh, i think it's a good deal I, I think it's a great watch for all around use including dress use the 36 mil one we're talking about now um even the ones with hollow end links uh yeah i would get one if it's in good shape and the bracelet doesn't have much stretch you can get a good deal on them. Five grand, probably, for a nice one. 
uh, live feeds. The, 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 that was cool that you guys reconnected. It obviously went to a great guy. Oh, yeah, Paul's a great guy. He's actually bought at three watches that he still has from me. I think he might have bought another watch from me, but I, he has three that he still has. He's got the 125th anniversary Omega, which is a monster, and it has an integral bracelet. That's the reason I sold it to him. I never liked that bracelet. Uh, and then he has a bubble back Rolex that he bought for me that he still has. And then, of course, the red sub. Yeah, he is a great guy. And he, in, he invited me to go out on his boat in Annapolis. I'm going to do it in the spring. I'm going to make a point of it to do that. I like, I like Paul. Good night from Luxembourg. You really influenced me to go on the GS Snowflake. Uh, do, you, do you have it? Did you get the Snowflake? Okay. Um... What part of Maryland are you in? I work in Maryland. I'm in Thurmont right now, the northern part of the state, up almost to the Pennsylvania line. It's where Camp David is, right near the presidential retreat. Uh, the new day date 40 has ceramic coating in the link. Yeah, that's that's that. I I was thinking about a day date 40. I actually was thinking about it, and I'm still kind of thinking about it. But you know, the stretch is not as big a problem. Mine is in real good shape. Um, you, you can look at the videos I have of it. Um, it you know, again, 20 years worth of wear uh, on a really pretty regular basis, pretty much every day, and it's fine. So I don't know that the, 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 on these newer day dates, the stretch I think is over exaggerated. Some of the earlier ones, uh, yeah, it's pretty bad on some of them. But it's uh, is it worth paying that huge amount of extra money? over buying like an 18238 you can buy a real nice 18238 probably for around 15 grand a real nice one is it worth paying like another 10 grand or more to get the 40 mil i don't know and, and the 40 mil i think seems a little bit big it seems talk about hitting people over the head with it that's kind of a little bit on the gaudy side i think the 36 mil is just right it really is for a day date it's just it's a hell of a nice freaking classic watch are you kidding me i mean talk about fucking gorgeous what do you think of the date just 41 I, again they're, they're, they look kind of big i saw one on wrist at at i've got a video clip of it um at uh steve's event there was a customer there with a 41 and it looked pretty big it, it looked kind of like it might be too big and his wrist wasn't that small I don't know. I'm, I am, uh, I'm thinking those watches might be too big. I'm thinking a 36 mil is just the way to go. I know that's against the trend, but I'm not so sure that those watches aren't too freaking big. I, if I want a big watch, I want something like this. I want a, an actual freaking sport watch. You know, the real deal. Not a kind of quasi-dress, you know, kind of in-between... I don't know about that whole whole idea there. Uh, now, the Snowflake, let's go back to the Snowflake. That's 41 mil, but the shape of the case and everything, and the end links and everything, the way the bracelet is, and, and the, 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 the fact that it's so lightweight, it really wears like a smaller watch. But, but even that, I would just as soon if that watch was like 38 mil. I'd probably be tickled pink if it was 38 mil. I wouldn't be considering selling it if it was 38 mil, probably. I probably wouldn't have bought the dress watch. If it was 38 mil and thinner, I probably wouldn't have bought... Uh, I probably still would buy the dress watch. I like that that 18 karat gold. Um, okay. My next lux lux luxury watch will be original 70s. Okay. Not, uh, not familiar. A any thoughts on the new the root beer gmt yeah that, that that's pretty cool i wouldn't pay the kind of money that they're selling for again i'd buy a, a a grand seiko before i'd spend that kind of money i get a better watch the citizens are paying also be the ones who will have to give up the ones and o's on their bank accounts <laughs> okay more political which I'll combo 
eyeing for the day day forty. Day, I would get the black dial with the um, loomed gold hands for readability. Um, that's the one I would get. Your mic is catching some static noises. I wonder if it's the um, cable around a little more. Got some technical difficulties here. Up even higher. Okay, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Um, what's your opinion on white gold platinum? Uh, again, I bought a white gold date eight years ago, many, many years ago, like around 1980 or so. And I got a hell of a deal on it. That's the only reason I bought it. But no, I would buy 18 karat yellow gold. I wouldn't even buy the rose gold. I'd buy the 18 karat yellow gold. Every freaking time. Okay, let's see. Don't give up on it, okay? Big watch equals Panerai. Panerai would not buy their ugly watch. Cream, sorry. Clueless to what you're referring to, okay? <clears throat> Cash rules everything around me. Sorry, Craig, no more politics for me. Okay, sorry, didn't help, but continue anyways. Huh. I don't know where that static's coming from. Let me pull this other one out. And turn it Maybe there was some dust on it. All right. Well, I played around with it some. Um, okay. What, um, what kind of discount do you think one can get on an SBGA 211 from an AD? What are the things we can say to help lower the price? How would you negotiate? Well, the easiest way to do it is in person with cash. But that's not always easy to do. The thing you pulled in was the source. Better. Now it's perfect again. Hmm. Interesting. Um, okay, so... Um, I, I mean, it's like any deal is like... Is timing and it's how comfortable the seller is with the buyer. If he thinks you're a guy in 10 buck 2 that is jerking him around, then he's not going to be as, as willing to negotiate. Then if you're in person, face-to-face, -face, with money in your freaking hand, he hates to walk you and let you leave that store with that money in your pocket and not his pocket. So that's it. That's what I would do. I would try to find an AD and, and see him in person with cash money. Um, what are the GS service centers like? Are they serviced in Japan? Don't worry about it. They're not, these watches don't give trouble. I talked to Steve. He said he's been selling them for over three years. He's never had any come back. It's very rare for one of these watches to give trouble. Switch back to the other camera. Very rare for one of these watches to give trouble. I don't think, I think it's a non-issue. I don't think you have to worry about service. Um, but to answer your question, they do service all of them except for the chronograph in uh, New Jersey, here in the U.S. Uh, they have a guy trained to service them. Uh, but I, I really don't think you're going to have that problem. Uh, many Seiko and Grand Seikos wear smaller than their size. Yeah, because of the shape of the lugs. Oops. Because of the way they, they contour to the wrist. They, they really are engineered to be comfortable on wrist. And that's... That should be the first thing that a watch designer thinks about is, is how comfortable on wrist they are. But a lot of watch designers don't think about that. And even some of the newer Rolexes with the slab sides and the, you know, the way that, that, that maxi case is designed, 
That's a poor design. I don't know what I don't know what they were thinking about. They screwed that watch up big time. I have a 1975 Rolex day chest in stainless steel. Love it as my everyday. But my attention is drawn towards an Apple Watch. What are your thoughts on? I love the Apple Watch. I, I wore mine for a couple of years. I don't wear it now, but yeah, that the, the new one I'm sure is fantastic. It's a it's a fantastic watch. You're not going to get me to say anything bad about it. I've got the let me switch back. I've got the link bracelet on mine. That's really a nice setup. Very comfortable on wrist, and the new one is even thinner. I think this one's only 12 millimeter. I I think the new one, or maybe the maybe this one's a little more than 12, and the new one's 12. Anyway, the the, the new one's thinner. And that you could definitely wear as a dress watch. Absolutely, you can wear that as a dress watch. Uh, it's designed to be worn as a dress watch. Um, so the, the 1975 Datejust, my first watch was around that vintage. It was a 1978, I believe. I bought new. It had been in the dealer's window for a while, too. It was a... Believe it or not, back then, the bracelets were made in the U.S. It had the U.S. bracelet on it, not the, what they called the Swiss bracelet. And you could tell the difference. And, um, and it was $560 list price. And I don't remember what I paid for it. It was not list. That was the first watch I bought new. I think it was around 78 or 79. Uh, is the Rolex... What, one 4270 considered a maxi case. It's only 39. I don't know. I'd have to look at it. You can tell by just look at the lugs. If the lugs look bulbous and look like crap, then it's the maxi case. Grand Seiko brand is like Toyota. They they rarely break. Yeah, they're not going to give any trouble. The watch, if it gives trouble, it's probably going to give trouble in very short order. It's going to be defective or something like that. If it gets by the first few months, it's probably going to last for 20 years. I believe the Snowflake retails for AD. If I'd asked for 20% including tax, that'd be too high. You can try to get 20%. If you got cash money, I would give it a shot face-to-face. -face. I would not try to do that deal over the phone. I, I don't think you're going to do that deal over the phone, 20% on a Snowflake. Snowflakes are getting hard to get. I'll sell you mine for 5000 box and papers. How's that? Um, assuming I like the dress watch that's coming on Tuesday. We'll see what happens there. Yep, that was 560 new. That was back in the day. Absolutely. Been pointed out to me that Maxi Case breaks the golden ratio between outer lugs. And here's the other problem with the Maxi Case. They still have that puny 20 millimeter bracelet. See, this watch here has a 22 millimeter bracelet. Looks much better. Okay? Look at that puppy. That's a good-looking puppy. Um, uh, I'll buy it if in Canadian. <laughs> you can pay me Bitcoin. You can pay me 5000 worth of Bitcoin. I'll do that deal. 5000 U.S. worth of Bitcoin. Okay, here, here we go. Let me show you the uh, diver again over here. Whoops, keep drifting away, keep going the wrong direction. There you go. All right. Okay. I think he means 5,000 USD. Yes, 5,000 USD, but you can pay me in Bitcoin, current exchange rate. Plenty GS snowflakes in Australia. How much are they in Australia? Um... On the Seiko Shogun, does the this crystal hold up? Yes, mine held up great. I had mine for two years. It held up great. I wouldn't worry about the sapphire. Uh, I, I, not on that watch. That, that watch was fine. And I did not baby it. And you can look at my videos on the channel of it. 
I've got several videos of it. Uh, Australia, closer to Japan, U.S. Maybe that has to do with it. Uh, are we in the Grand Seiko part of the talk yet? <laughs> We've been talking a lot about Grand Seiko. <laughs> That diver's purdy. It's really purdy in person. You really have to see these things in person to really get the gist of them. To me, the cathedral hand clashes too much with the ceramic bezel and the overall modernized look of it. Well, this is not a ceramic bezel, by the way, on this watch. And that doesn't bother me either one bit. I think it looks beautiful. And the benefit is it will not shatter if you bang it against something, it will not shatter, and it will not cost a ton of money to replace when it does shatter. And also, if you do scratch it real bad or damage it, it can be replaced much less expensive than a ceramic. So I have no problem with the fact that it's not uh, ceramic. No problem whatsoever. Um, and the hands, I really like them. They're real readable. I can read this in any lighting situations. Um, you know, coming down to it, there's nothing I would change. Now, if I could get it down to 12 and a half millimeters thick, see the thickness of it? It's 14 millimeter. If I could get it two, million, two millimeters thinner, and I wouldn't care if they made it 100 meters, <laughs> you know, diving. <laughs> I don't care about the depth. I, I bought this because of the readability. It's the reason I bought a diver's watch. It's the legibility. Even if I'm not wearing my reading glasses, I can read this puppy. That's why I bought it. I think I'm going to buy the 231 Finance to love it so much. I wouldn't finance a watch. Save up and pay cash. First time buying a luxury watch from AD. Do they sell you the display model? They always give you a new one. Da, da, da. Well, it depends on what they've got. They might have one in the back, in the box, um, but usually the display ones still have the plastic on them and everything. I mean, there's no real downside to buying the one that's in the case. Not anymore. Uh, I think I'm going to buy the 231. Okay. Uh, I saw the SBDB011 Marine Master with spring drive. I don't know if I want this or this one. Yeah, that, that other one I think is real thick. I think some of those other ones are real thick. Watch out. They might be too thick. This one's the thinnest, and it's 14 millimeters. Some of those other watches are, you know, really thick. What do you thought on vintage watches? <sighs> they, I think they're going for too much money. I, and, and I'm scared that I'm going to have to have them serviced and they're going to give trouble. I mean, I buy my watches to use... You can get a real deal on a, like, for example, if you bought a 36 mil day just, you can get a real good deal on those. And, you know, Steve had one for 2200 bucks retail at his place. That's, that's okay, buying something like that. But I wouldn't spend a whole lot of money on a, quote, vintage watch. Just as watch cases increase in diameter... For a style trend, they are aware of cases being made thicker. They have to be merely for style. Well, no, some of these watches are thicker because of the depth rating of the, you know, that, you know, like that, uh, that Sea Dweller, the Cameron one, or whatever the hell that one is, it'll go like, I don't know how many thousands of feet. Um, you know, that sucker's. 17 millimeters or something. I mean, but it's because of the dive rating and all that. So I don't really care if it's thick. I usually wear a short sleeve. Yeah, but if they're real, real thick, it's kind of a pain. Looks tough and cool. Shock magnet. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. I, if, if that doesn't bother you and you're into that stuff, then yeah, some people buy the Marine Master. It's pretty thick. Uh, and those are rugged pieces. I mean, you can wear that thing forever. I'd get the spring drive, though, definitely. Have you heard any stories about modern GS high beat movement reliability? I Not really, but I'm sure they're pretty reliable. But I would not buy one. I would buy the spring drive or I would buy the uh, 9F quartz. That's all I would do.
I don't see an advantage of buying the high beat. Unless I'm missing something here over the spring drive. Maybe some of them are a little thinner. I don't know. Um, we're going to wrap up here pretty soon. Anybody else have anything that they want me to show them or... Move the movement I saw. When I saw you doing live Rolex talk, I thought it would be all grand sake. <laughs> we actually started talking out about Rolex a little bit, but yeah, the conversation quickly went to um, grand sake. But we've talked about some Rolexes. Um, I, you know, I have no problem with Rolexes. I think that you just the smart money is going to buy a thirty-six mil date just an Explorer one. Some of the less sought-after watches that are actually a better option for most people than buying a, a Submariner. Submariner is good. The only reason I bought the divers is because my eyes are, are, you know, I need reading glasses now, and I need to read a bill, the legibility. When I take the glasses off, I can still read this watch. I can't read the Snowflake without my glasses. And I'm still in denial. I don't carry the glasses with me all the time because my distance vision is pretty good. So most of the time, I don't have the glasses. So that this watch, I can just look at it. I can tell immediately what time it is. No problem. Without the glasses, it's so readable. That's the only reason I bought a diver's watch. Um, otherwise, I probably would just be wearing the snowflake. If I was 30 years younger, I'd probably just be wearing the snowflake all the time. Simple as that. Rolex 1655. A lot of people really know. No, they don't know how the spring drive works. A lot of people don't know. Yes, it's it's a sitting room behind me. Um, I don't think a lot of people... Okay, Rolex 1655. Refresh my memory which watch that is, the 1655. I don't know all the model numbers, but just tell me what it is, and then I'll tell you if I've seen one. I'm torn between GS and dividend yielding stocks <laughs> by the stocks. <laughs> of course, I don't know. The market's pretty high right now. Uh, but if you're long term, buy the stocks. If you're in the U.S., set up a Roth IRA. My God, if you're young, if you now I'm talking about if you're under 35 years of age, uh, the best thing to do is to set up a Roth IRA and max it out each year. $5,500 a year. Until you're like, I think, 55 or 58, then you can go up to 6,500 a year. I do 6,500 a year now. That's the max. Uh, that That's the best thing since sliced bread because all the growth in that account is tax-free. Or Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is risky. I own it, and I'm holding it, but I'm not advising people to buy it. Um, but if you do buy Bitcoin... Buy it and get a, a Trezor hardware wallet and, and store it with that and just be long-term. Be a long-term thinker. Check out Adam Meister's videos. I interviewed Adam Meister, by the way. There's a video on my channel from a couple years ago. I interviewed him. He's a cool guy. He's a Bitcoin guy. I got a, two interviews of him. One, my dad interviewed him. Got a couple hundred thousand views. And one, I interviewed him like a year later or something. My dad interviewed him first a couple years ago. Cool guy. I'm going to get one of the GMT variants with spring drive. I'm traveling, but not like an airline pilot or anything, but the independent hours are great. Yeah, being able to switch that hour hand, if you, if you travel, that's really cool. I would definitely, if I was traveling, I travel up and down the East Coast. I'm in the same time zone all the time pretty much. But if I was traveling out in other time zones, I would definitely get the GMT in a heartbeat. Um, 205 slash 211. 211 is the going to be the newer dial. It's going to be the one with the Grand Seiko at the top. That's the one I would get. Explorer 1655. So that's the older Explorer. Is that a 36 mil? Yeah. Hell yeah. It's an excellent watch. It's the one I'm thinking about. Yeah, I've seen them. Years ago, I've seen them. 
Uh, I, the newer ones, I, I, I saw a newer one, I think, uh, not too long ago. I, one of the bigger ones, but I, they're okay, the 40 mil or whatever they are, the bigger one. But no, I would go with the 36 mil and save some money and get one of the older ones. Absolutely, I would buy that. Have you been in France? No, I haven't been in France. I've been in Italy. I've been in Moscow several times. Not been in France. Roth IRA, hell yes. If you're young, hell yes. What's the best country you visited? I had a lot of good times in Moscow, but that's a whole nother story. Already bought some Bitcoin and holding. Okay. Long-term hold. Hold till at least 2024. Modeling, yeah. Explorer 2, 40 millimeter. That's okay, the Explorer 2, 40 mil. Uh, I would rather get the original Explorer, but yeah, that's okay because it's got the um, GMT function. So yeah, if you want a sport watch, that'd be a good option. Late 20s and really want to buy a Mercedes C300 Coupe. No, get a Lexus. What is your opinion on these cars in Canada? Yeah, no, get a Lexus. Do not pass go, get a Lexus. Mercedes, BMW, Volvo, all of those are problematic. They're going to have issues. They're going to be expensive to maintain. Buy the Lexus and just run it. Just change oil every couple years. Run synthetics in it. Uh, mobile one. Why until 2024? That's two halvings. The, the next halving is in 2020 when they have the amount of production of Bitcoin. And then they're going to have it again in 2024. So, yeah, I would hold it at least till 2024. Let's see what happens. Can high beat be considered a complication? If watches are made technically sophisticated. High beat hertz rate. Yeah, but they did it right, and I think it's reliable. But again, I, I would not buy that over the uh, spring drive. The spring drive is going to be, you know, less wear and tear. That that escapement, that especially high beat, that's a lot of back and forth. Uh, that's wear and tear that, that the spring drive does not have. Yeah, Explore 2, 40 millimeter. Yeah, we talked about that. That's an okay, good. The Lexus ES or IS over Mercedes. Absolutely buy the Lexus. I like the LS sedan. I had a LS 400, 1990, and I had a 2002 LS 430. And then I bought the uh, 2004 Prius that I have now, and I still have it. It's only got about 120,000 miles on it. Here, I'll show you. While, while we're here, I'll show you my uh, Lexus, one of them. Pull it up here on my Flickr. How many people do you know? That would do this would do this to their Lexus here we go we switch to camera four there's my Lexus brand spanking new I immediately took it and got it lettered up with all my lettering so there you go that's a 2002 LS 400 sedan that was a hell of a car Hell of a car. The main reason I got the Prius is I can put the Segway in the back and my camera gear and all that. It's easier because of the hatchback. So there you go. There you go. All right. Has <laughs> something ugly about it. Maybe the head. Oh, it's a gorgeous freaking car. The LS400 was a little more classic lines. Yeah, it's LS400 is a fantastic car. If you can get one of those, like a low mileage used one from a little old lady, you're doing good. Cool, I would look into that. Okay, Craig, do you own or have inherited any sentimental watches that you'd never flip? No, my dad had a 33 Jewel Seiko that he brought back in the mid 70s, but we don't know where it is. I'd love to have that watch, but he doesn't know where it is. I think he lost it years ago. I, I don't know where it is. I'd love to have it, though. It was a cool watch. Japan market. 
um, high-end Seiko. It wasn't a Grand Seiko, but it was a high-end Seiko. My uncle had 1996 LS 400 since 97, also run. Yeah, that's a hell of a, the LS 400 is a hell of a car. Especially the one I had, the 1990 was the first year, and they really did it right because they wanted to, to really make a good impression on the media. And so they almost hand-built each of those cars. They were just a fantastic car. Um, Lexus toy makes a vehicle. Beautiful. Okay, still drive my 2003 facelift BMW. I like the GS430 much more than the LS. Yeah, the GS430 is something, too. I had a GS300. Um, it was actually my wife's car, my, my, my first wife, um, and she's got it. She took it to California when she took off. And so, uh, yeah, that was the six cylinder in line six in that. That was a hell of a nice car. We bought that with some profits from, uh, online trading stocks that we had. We had, uh, Ameritrade. We had several of them when they were going crazy back in the early late 1999, 2000-ish time, and we bought a, uh, we sold some of that stock and bought a 1999, I think it was a 99, yeah, LS, GS, GS 300, the six-cylinder one. That's when they came out with that new body style. Um, BTC having is a reduction in minor reward, not reduction in production. So there could be a direct correlation. Production is mathematically okay. That's that's all over my head. But all I know is the supply will be cut. The amount that's produced each segment or whatever the hell you call it. And anyway, that's that's the only reason why I I I said 2024, and I'm going to stick to that. You you kind of should set goals right, and so that that way you can, as Adam Meister would say, you can have a strong hand and you can actually hold. If you set in concrete, I'm going to hold until this date. That way you're not tempted just because it runs up a lot. You know, you're not tempted to sell. Now, I did sell some last fall, last November, um, and I actually got back all my initial investment. Um, so I'm playing with the house's money right now with all the Bitcoin that I'm holding now. It's like free Bitcoin almost. Um, so what else do we have here? I think we're going to wrap it up. We've been around 43 to 50 something watching consistently. Um, this was fun. I, you know, I, I thought, um, it was just a good opportunity to answer some questions that people had that people were still confused about some things. So uh, I love your watch content. Great job. Love the, love the GS. I really want one. I'm stuck with Tudor and Omega right now. Ha ha ha. Well, thanks for the $5 super chat. That's fantastic, Chris. Um, you should sell those while the market is hot. Now, I'm not so sure about the Omega, but the Tudor market I think is pretty good. I would get out of the Tudor if you can and then start piling up some money. And when the timing is right, Get into a GS. Thanks for your time. This was great. I have G-Shock. Starbo and seven Starbo one three. Yeah. I sold Vacheron overseas and brought SBGJ203 and SBGA22. Wow. Pleased with the 203 in terms of quality craftsmanship movement. I was on vacation. Cool. All right, well, I'm going to figure out how to wrap this broadcast. Let me see what else. You need to get a live show. Somebody else needs one, yeah. Okay, so let's see here how I can do this. I'm going to say, oh, my other camera went dead. <laughs> I should have plugged in a <laughs> an AC adapter to it. My camera, my, my camera that was on the watches went dead, so I can't switch to that. Okay, so I'm going to figure out how to stop this broadcast here. How much to Super Chat? How much to Super Chat for you to eat a whole pizza online? <laughs> First of all, I have to get the pizza. If I got the pizza, I'd eat it for free. I, I love pizza. I own a 
Tudor Black Bay 58. Can you explain to me why the GS is 10 times better? Oh, my gosh. Get rid of the, sell it and get a GS, and then you'll understand. Tudor's okay, but no, no, no. It's not in the same league. It's been a great show. Thanks to everyone for joining me. <laughs> because GS is the best ever. Absolutely. They're super well made. Craig, you remind me of my late father. Please don't leave me. Oh, I'll, I'll be here for a little while longer. Okay. Well, LOL. All right. Well, we'll do this. I'll eat two whole pizzas online. You arranged to have one delivered to me. I'll eat it. Good night, Craig. It was a pleasure. All right. Let me see. I'm trying to figure out how to end this. I'm going to hit stop on my phone here. Stop. And I'm going to complete the event. Complete the event. 